Today, I'm going to show you how to use Section 623 to remove collections that are reported without identifiers from your credit report. And this is what I'm talking about. If you take a look at this collection, you can see that it says original creditor, but there's no collector name. There's no original creditor name, and there's most definitely no address. All you can see is original creditor, account number 100351. That's it. No name, no nothing. What they're basically doing is taking away your ability to number one, identify, and number two, remove it by disputing directly with the collector. However, if you take a look at this one, it clearly shows the collector name, original creditor name, the account number, and at the bottom, it most definitely shows the address. Now, you can still remove accounts like this, and if you were going to dispute it, it would look like something like this, where you're saying, hey, this collection is unknown and completely unverifiable, please remove. So you're basically putting the burden of proof on the bureaus and the collector. But I digress, that's a different video. All right, take a look at Section 623, Responsibilities of Furnishers of Information to Consumer Reporting Agencies. And we're looking at something very, very specific, no address requirement. So they are prohibited from reporting information with actual knowledge of errors, reporting information after notice and confirmation of errors, and let's take a look at this, no address requirement. A person who clearly and conspicuously supplies, excuse me, specifies to the consumer an address for notices referred to in subparagraph B shall not be subject to subparagraph A. However, nothing in subparagraph B shall require a person to specify such an address. Now, there's a couple of things in here, but basically, they need to report an address for you, the consumer, to dispute this account directly with the furnisher of information, right? And they cannot report with actual knowledge of errors. Now, you can't tell me by looking at this account that they knew or that they didn't know, excuse me, that they were reporting this without errors. No that's not going to fly all right now b says reporting information after notice and confirmation of errors that they continue to report this after they've been notified by you the consumer that it's reported in error okay so i don't care what the rest of this says this is very very specific they need to report an address if the account could possibly be inaccurate and as you can see looking at this account it is 100 percent completely and totally Inaccurate. So if you have accounts like this on your credit report, then you can dispute it by basically saying this account needs to be removed pursuant to Section 623 for failure to report identifying information and a conspicuously specified address. All right, so that is it for today. I hope you found value in this video. If you did, make sure to smash that like and subscribe if you haven't done so. And if you need my help, just use the link right at the top bar and I will see if I can help. But that is it for today. Have a great weekend. And just so you know, I do have my coaching program opening up on Monday and I will have a video that comes out about that. But you can use the link in the description and drop your information for the application and I will add you into my list. All right, so take care, have a great day. Talk to you soon, bye. If you've been looking for a step-by-step -step tutorial that's going to show you exactly how to remove your negative items, and I'm talking about everything from collections, foreclosures, repossessions, late payments, time to inquiries, then this is the video because today you're gonna learn an extremely easy, proven, powerful, step-by-step -step credit sweep system that you can use to remove those accounts from your credit report permanently. And we're actually going to cover um, a couple of different things, how to create your dispute reasons, three different ways to dispute your accounts with examples, four different ways to dispute a verified account after round one, and how to dispute your accounts using the pyramid method. And some of these things we're going to go quickly over and some of them we're going to take our time with. Now, this is something we're going to go over quickly because I'm actually going to link another video down in the description, but this very simply breaks down how to create your dispute reason. Now, if you watch the end of this video, I'm going to give you the link for you to access this full presentation so that you can take your time and go through the advanced creator and learn to do this yourself, okay? And if you look at the top of your screen, there is a link for you to schedule a call with me if you want me to do this for you or to find out if I can do this for you very simply by going to my 740 com. All right, so let's get right to this. Like I said, we're going over a couple of things and we're going to stay on a couple of things. Now, here are a couple examples, and this is one of the things we're going to go over quickly. Detailed, general, listed, and incorrect dispute reasons. A detailed dispute reason is one where 
you literally explain the entire Ajiro formula. And the Ajiro formula is very, very simple. You're telling them what you're disputing, why you're disputing it, and what you want to happen with the facts. Now, that is a detailed dispute, but you can also write it as listed reason for deletion, factual data, and additional information. I have done this before, and it works the same as doing a detailed sentence. Now, a general dispute, I don't really recommend it because you're not giving them the facts, but for whatever reason, if you don't have the facts, you can send a general dispute still using factual information because you're giving them the actual dispute reason. The wrong way to dispute is to very simply say, delete this because you have the wrong information and it's not correct. Obviously, if it were that simple, then I wouldn't have 500 videos that show you the full breakdown and how to do this yourself, okay? So it's not as simple as just telling them that they're wrong because obviously they are wrong and they know it, okay? So here's the dispute flow. We have going left to right, rounds one through five, and we have our flow type. Now I wanna explain something real quick. Even though it's broken down into reasons, challenges, and additional disputes, we don't have three letters here. We have two because your challenge, such as method of verification or request for an investigation, is going to be in that first paragraph, just as a simple sentence. And then your dispute reason, such as date last active or date last paid, is going to go down next to your account. So for round one, if we're disputing like a charge off, your dispute reason would be date last active. Your challenge would be request for investigation. I'm requesting that you investigate the following inaccuracies on my credit report. And then additional disputes would very simply be the collector validation of debt letter one. Round two would be date of last payment, challenge method of verification, and then so on and so forth with collector letter two and creditor letter one. So round three is payment history, challenge is notice of dispute or failure to enter notice of dispute. And then round four is status update or failure to update the date last reported and no investigation. Their failure to enter, or excuse me, to perform an independent investigation because obviously they did not update the date last reported, which tells you right there, you did not investigate the negative information on my credit report that I listed in my previous letter. Make sense? Okay. Round five, data first delinquency and FCRA requirements, as well as sending out a CFPB complaint for violations. Do not do this if you do not have the actual information that would support a CFPB complaint. All right. So let's go over into our flow chart. Now, I do need to explain this before we go any further. So let's say that you're disputing a charge off. And this is round one. It comes back as verified. You use date of last activity. Over here on the left, it's going to be used if it came back as verified. If there was no response, you go down this column here. If they came back and said that they don't understand the nature of your dispute, you use this column here. And here is a list of different tactics that would be used on this round. So let's start over here on the left. So first was date last active. They came back and said it's, ver uh, excuse me, said it's verified, which nine times out of 10, they're going to. You're gonna say, now it's the date of last um, payment. Now, you can also then go your next round if they come back and say it's verified payment history, next round status update or date last reported, just as I showed you on the previous slide, and then data first delinquency. Now, let's say that they don't come back and say anything. They ignore you. I mean, obviously, they're getting 1.5 million disputes per month per bureau. So nine times out of 10 right now, at least four right now, um, and today is August uh, what 2nd of 2021, they're probably going to ignore you. So expect that they don't respond. So you're gonna do date of last payment, method of verification, requirements, independent investigation, and then notice of dispute or failure to enter the notice of dispute after um, the, or excuse me, within the 30th day, uh, excuse me, again, 30 days. Sometimes I get a little twisted with the things that I say, so I apologize. So now let's say that they come back and they give you all of these different um, excuses, right? Because that's what their job is. They wanna get rid of you as fast and as cheaply as possible. So they first come back and say, we don't understand the nature of your dispute. You're going to restate your dispute reason and then provide the actual report that shows them what you're talking about. Because if they're saying that they don't understand, obviously you're gonna to have to show them, okay? If they come back and say that they won't reinvestigate, you're gonna go with date of last payment because that is new and relevant information. And right on their um, you know, rejection letter, it's going to say new and relevant information. Hello, that's a new dispute reason. Now, if they tell you to contact the creditor, you can use the lawsuit Cushman versus TransUnion from 1997. And if they say we already, verified this, give them the FCRA requirements under section 1681.
Now, here are your tactics. Joe the plumber, I'm a regular person. I don't know any of this stuff, so you need to help me out. Round three, squeaky wheel is where you're literally going after everything. You're calling them, you're faxing them, you're disputing, you're making complaints with the uh, CFPB, the AG, the BBB, so on and so forth. Round four tactic is also disputing with the creditor and the collector and saying that they didn't validate or respond. And then lastly, you're going after the CFPB complaints. And I'm going to see if I can put this link in the description as well. This is a dispute reason creator that's going to help you create your actual dispute reasons. Because remember, it's the actual dispute reason that gets the account removed and it's not the letter. Okay. Now, again, you can go up into, um, or excuse me, down into the description to access the links that were on the previous slide or just look at the top of the, um, you know, a video window or whatever and access my740.com to schedule a call with me because I know what I'm doing and I know exactly what should and should not be reported. So this is something that, you know, I can help you with if your file does qualify. All right. So this is the very last thing that we're going to go over. This is the inverted dispute reason pyramid. And it's very important because it shows you your biggest ammo, which are rounds one through five, your backups round four or later and your last resort. So I might actually make a video specifically on this, but we're gonna go over this quickly uh, because I have other videos that explain this, such as the evolution line method and the pyramid method. So for rounds one through five, your biggest ammo are going to be date last active, date last paid, notice of dispute, uh, monthly payments on charge-offs, collections were going to be late and past due, and then status update and date reported. Now, if you're running out of things, you can go after balance, payment history, high balance, past due, method of verification, transferred or sold, collections uh, limit. Now, your last resort, these are the things that you just don't want to use because it's not really going to get you anywhere, but you can still use them for factual disputing. Open date, type, terms, comments, status details, pay and account, um, and then limit and account number. Okay. So if you are having issues trying to figure out where you should be starting, it's going to be up here in your biggest ammo. Because remember, we're going to war with cannons, not squirt guns. All right. So if you have questions about this, post it in the comments. If not, click on one of the other videos that come up on your screen. If you found value in this video, which I know that you did, hit the like, let me know, and I will see you next time. But again, if you need help, head over to my740.com and I will see if I can help. I hope you have a great day and see you later. Today we have 53 actionable credit repair dispute tips and instead of wasting any more time we're actually just going to jump right into this because we have quite a few to go over and I've set these up as flashcards to make it easier to deliver this content all right so you're going to want to send each bureau letter out on a different date and no I didn't come up with this this was actually given as testimony in a lawsuit by someone who previously worked at Equifax so I didn't question it I started doing it about five years ago or so and guess what it changed my results for the positive, so I kept with it. You wanna put a max of 10 accounts per letter, not 12, not 50, but 10, unless it is medical or putting all those accounts in one letter is part of your tactic. And you're gonna send out one dispute reason per account. I'm seeing so many people who are putting all their eggs in one basket, and guess what? Now you're crap out of luck. When it comes back as verified because you just gave up all your ammo. Why are you going to expend all your ammo on just one of the enemy like that doesn't make any sense okay and do not sign your letters if you're signing your letters you're going to find out that your signature somehow was transposed onto a contract that you didn't sign all right and do not falsely claim identity theft or say not mine saying not mine as you will find out is credit repair suicide and i don't want that to happen to you all right so when you falsely claim identity theft and you use a police report and an affidavit like you're literally saying like yeah i agree to go to jail for like a year for perjury when it comes back and you know like i'm totally lying okay so unless you want to go to jail for six months for fraud you probably shouldn't use this method i teach you in my 500 videos how to do this the right way and charge-offs will report a balance if unpaid or not sold or transferred okay please listen to me there's so many people who are commenting and questioning and all that kind of stuff why there's a balance on their charge off well okay did you pay it no that's why there's a balance on your charge off you may want to look up what 
charge off and written off mean? They are literally just accounting terms and we're not going to go over those right now. All right. So don't dispute directly with a debt buyer. And I think I actually have um, one of these that's for some reason or another going to repeat. So if it does, I apologize and we'll skip through it. But don't dispute directly with a debt buyer because unless it's outside the statute of limitations, you're literally going to be putting yourself in front of the debt buyer saying, hello, here I am. Take me to court. I am ready for you. These are not the ones that you're going to want to send a validation of debt to, okay? You only dispute with the bureaus for debt buyer collections like portfolio recovery, midline, calvary, uh, so on and so forth, like second round, okay? And I do have videos that explain exactly how to do this. And third-party collectors are not debt buyers. So when it's your medical account or your utility bill or whatever, car insurance, those are not debt buyers. Those are third-party collectors, and you can use the validation of debt. And then, of course, don't send a VOD, a validation of debt, to the credit bureaus because you're trying to validate the debt. The debt is validated by the actual collector themselves. All right. And don't send a VOD to the original creditor. You're actually going to use a 623 dispute on this. And here we go. It is once again being... Uh, repeated, so I skipped past it. Make sure to send all required identification. That's your ID, that's your social security card, or your W-2, something with your full social security number on it, and your proof of address. If you're not putting all of this on there, then guess what? You're giving the bureaus a reason to, to just reject you, okay? They need to be able to identify you and say, okay, well, John, yes, okay, this is John. And if not, then it's Jane trying to do something like with identity theft on John's credit report, and they're not going to allow that. So every single time you send out a dispute, and yes, I see that typo there, don't hate, appreciate. Don't forget to include your full name, your address, your date of birth, and your social on your dispute letters at the top of your disputes, in addition to sending out the copies of your disputes, all right? And don't send a picture of an envelope for address proof. That is not address proof. And yes, I see disputes rejected all the time because people are sending in a picture of an envelope. That's just a picture of an envelope. Like, this, you know the way that your mail comes to you? Like, literally, they're just taking a picture of the outside of an envelope. No, you need to open that sucker up and take a picture of that full page, your utility bill, your bank statement, whatever it is, all right? And just as I mentioned, credit repair suicide is saying not mine. If it is yours, you need to find a different reason for dispute. And again, False identity theft is an attempt to benefit into fraud, which is a C felony. So here's the key to disputing. It is the dispute reason. It is not the dispute letter or the text. Like I can't tell you how many times, including today, this morning, people ask, what type of letter do I send out? What's the letter to send out for a charge off for a late payment? It's not the letter, it's the dispute reason. Your letter can literally say your personal information, the date, the bureau you're disputing, and one line that says delete these for inaccuracy and provide or perform an investigation. Account one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all dispute reasons, blah, blah, blah. Thank you, John. That's it. That is it. Because guess what? Templates get flagged by the first computer, the OCR scanner that extracts the text. So the key to disputing is finding the dispute reason that is going to remove that account. It is not the rest of the text on the letter. And if you're sending stuff that has been sent before, it gets matched against millions of letters in their database. And guess what? There's no investigation. It comes back as verified a couple of days later. And we're going to skip past this and go to the next one. Certified mail does not equal a faster investigation. All it says is that your letter got to the bureaus. That's it. That's it. That is it. Okay. So you can see the same stuff basically from your credit report. Like unless you want to like, what is it? 20, $21 for three letters, $25. I don't even know. But unless you want to be spending that extra stuff, it's not going to make you get faster results. A regular stamp will do. All right. So I think we might be back um, on the beginning of it. Um, let's just find out, sign your letters. Don't bother trying to beat the OCR. You wanna make sure that you're actually using um, factual disputes instead of trying to use like ink and coffee grounds and staples, like none of that stuff matters, all right? And if I skip past some of these, it's because we've already gone over them. This kind of like mixes it up for whatever reason, but you're gonna wanna dispute all inquiries with the creditor and not the bureaus. And I show you exactly how to remove your inquiries for free. And yes, I see a typo there. Very simply with my free inquiry removal webinar that you can find on YouTube right here, just using the keyword 
search. All right. So just type in inquiry, hit enter, and it's going to show up with my videos and inquiries. All right. So bureaus never furnish docs or proof. They don't even get this stuff. They're actually required to have all the documents that would prior to reporting them on your credit report, um, like verify this account so that we, you know consumers we wouldn't have to go through this but obviously it doesn't work like that the way that it works just so you know and you can learn more about this by searching um metro 2 but um the way that it works is that when you're first registered as a data furnisher you have to submit like a batch like let's just say a batch of 100 accounts and all you're doing is submitting a spreadsheet or you're submitting inside metro 2 that's it there's no documentation that is forwarded to the bureaus and no documentation is going to come from the bureaus. It's just going to be deleted, updated, uh, rejected. That's what's going to come to you. OK, so the bureaus report whatever they are paid to because they're in the data business. They are not in the credit business. They make their money by obtaining, maintaining and selling your information. The lower your credit score while still being, you know, reasonable the more money that they can charge for your information and the more money the creditor is going to get by charging you a higher interest they're not interested in the people with the 800 credit scores they're interested in the people with the mid fives and the mid sixes because it makes them more money okay that is why these things stay on your credit report because they have no incentive to remove them let me say that again. The bureaus have no incentive to remove the negative items off your credit report because they make money off of it. And I'm going to try to go find my video uh, from 2017 or 2018 on um, the, uh, if it's down in the description, you can click on it and check it out. But it really, it really, really explains that whole thing, okay, about the conflict of interest. You can ask for an independent investigation. So if you go check out Cushman versus TransUnion from 1997, congressional opinion was that the bureaus actually have to, after first coming back and saying that it's verified and you disagreeing, perform an independent investigation outside the original source of information. So that means that they have to figure out for themselves without the creditor or the collector saying, hey, it's verified, whether this is reported accurately on your credit report. And I can tell you 100 times out of 100, all they're doing is using automation. There is no independent investigation and you can use your credit report to prove this stuff, all right? And always remember, I tell people this all the time, the CFPB comes after exhausting all your remedies. Not after one round, not after two, not after six. You have to first exhaust everything that you possibly can with the bureaus. You have to rack up all your violation logs and have all the responses or lack of responses and then go one time to the CFPB and get your negative items that are still remaining on your credit report removed. Otherwise, they are not going to pay attention to you and you're not going to get anywhere. All right. Now, the holiday season is actually the best time to dispute. And I would actually say dispute a max of three accounts per letter, not even 10, but three. And you can actually use the flashcard system to map out your letters. And if I can find my video on this, I will post it in the description, but um, I'm, I may forget, so I apologize. But what this means is that you can, um, the same way that some marketers use flashcards to map out the copy of their websites and their ads and all of that, you can do the same thing with your letters. You take a flashcard and you write your personal information on it and you stick it at the top of your desk or your kitchen table or whatever. You take the date and you stick it on a flashcard and you stick it underneath your personal um, or below whatever your personal information. You then write the bureau's address on a flashcard and you stick it below that. And then now you write your first paragraph on a flashcard and you stick it below that. So it makes it easier to construct your dispute letter and make sure that all of the requirements are included in your dispute letter. And you want to use very clear dispute reasons with facts. You, you hear me say this all the time, so we're not going to go more into that one, but removing an old negative account can actually drop your credit score because like if it's one of the older accounts or it's an old paid charge off and it's been on there for six years and you remove it, you're going to see your credit score drop if number one, it is your oldest account or one of your oldest accounts and your next oldest account isn't like past two years or so because now instead of a six year credit history, you're dealing with a two year credit history and that is a no go. Okay. That leads us to do not, you do not have to remove all your negative info because some of it, just as I was mentioning, is building out the other aspects of your FICO score. All right. Now, late payments must begin with a 30 day late. Otherwise, the previously reported paid on time months are inaccurate. You can use this for any late payment 
where the payment history does not make sense, like student loans. And if you're looking for information on how to remove student loans, I not only have a mini course specifically related to updating the late payment history for student loans and removing them from your credit report, all right? Um, you can find that by using, again, the keyword search using the magnifying glass under the main image on my channel, youtube.com slash expert credit suites. Just type in student loan and you will find that. Now, the way that you would use this is very simple by saying if it starts at, if it says, okay, 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 90 days late, you would very simply state that this account needs to be updated because the payment history does not make sense. And you would very simply not say payment history doesn't make sense, but that they're reporting 90 days late on X date when the two prior payments were not 30 and 60. Does that make sense? If it doesn't, please let me know down in the description. Here's something very important and it can remove your bankruptcies. They must report the city and states in the court name. If it says federal, that is not correct. If it says federal district, it is not correct. If it says U.S. dist, it is not correct. If it says U.S. bankruptcy court, it is not correct. If it says U.S. BKRPT, that is not correct. It must say U.S. bankruptcy court city state. I just gave you like a gem right there, okay? Collections can't have a past due. You can use this to remove them. Collections can't have late payments. You can use this to remove them. Like, hello, it's already past due. It is already late. Charge-offs cannot have a monthly payment. They're closed. How can I be paying monthly on a closed account? There should be no activity after the close date, all right? So I'm actually going to stop this right here. I believe we might have um, gotten through two sets of 26, but that is it for today. If you found value in this video, smash that like. If you have a question, post it down in the comments. Click on one of the other videos that come up on your screen. And as always, if you need my help, Head over to my740.com, schedule a call with me, and I will see if I can help you. Otherwise, subscribe if you haven't done so, because I'm going to come out with something that can literally remove all the negative items from your credit report, and I don't want you to miss it, all right? So that is it. Have a great one. Bye. Today we're talking about how to remove verified accounts and how to follow up with the credit bureaus, okay? So by the end of this video, you're going to know exactly what to do and what to say in your dispute letters to get results, but I have two very important things to remember. Number one, you can't say the same thing again. If you already said it's unknown, you can't ever say that again. And if you already said it's unverified, you can't say it again because it'll be frivolous. And asking for a method of verification as a dispute reason is literally a waste of 30 to 45 days, okay? If you're sending out dispute letter templates that use the dispute reason unverified. Keep in mind that each letter in this series literally says the same thing. Number one, this is unverified. Two, I told you it's unverified. Three, be advised that this is my third attempt to remove this account, okay? And one thing you may not know is that your letter is scanned, read, and matched against millions of other letters for a partial or full match of text. And if there is, it's an automatic verification without an investigation. So the first thing that you want to stop doing is sending templates, no more templates, okay? So here are the steps to disputing and removing verified accounts, but a bit of a warning, if you don't know how an account should and should not report, you may make mistakes here. So for charge-offs, we'll dispute the next blatant inaccuracy or next step in the hierarchy. Third-party collections will dispute the independent investigation or factually, such as payment history, and for the removal of a late payment, we'll either dispute the date as paid and put the burden of proof on the bureaus or dispute the next date as paid and ask for update of all late payment history. Now, what you should dispute, what you do want to dispute is date last active, date last paid, missing or mistimed notice of dispute, first date of delinquency, last, uh, excuse me, late payment after account was closed, inaccurate late payment history. And what you do not want to dispute, do not open date, terms, type, status, payment status, and balance and past due if they are not actually inaccurate. Okay, keep these things in mind because you need to know what works and what doesn't. So if the account is verified, look at the account and ask yourself a simple question. If I had one chance to get this account removed and could choose one reason based on the actual account on the credit report in front of me, what would it be? We call this the apocalypse reason. Okay, so you're going to choose one of the following on the left and we're going to insert it into the dispute reason formula on the right. Delete or update this account because choice from the left column, such as date last active, is inaccurate. And then you want to put what it shows. So Experian, 
the date, the amount, et cetera. Equifax, date, amount, et cetera. TransUnion, date, amount, et cetera. So it would be like, delete this account because the, inac the, excuse me, the date last active is inaccurate, okay? And your dispute flow is literally one thing to the next. So as an example, if you use date last active, you are now going to go date last paid. Your next reason could be possibly failure to enter the notice of dispute or mistimed notice of dispute. So this shows you exactly what you should be disputing in what order, okay? You should be able to choose the best action for what you're disputing now and be able to do the following steps. Number one, find the apocalypse reason. Two, know your exact next step to follow up with the bureaus in the event the account is not removed on this round. And three, have your battle plan mapped out using the current information and make changes as the actual account changes okay that is what this video is all about but you can head over to my channel to find exactly what you're looking for using keywords or you can schedule a discovery call with me at my740.com i would recommend watching these two videos next credit sweep tactics and formulas as well as a tactics part two kickoff and they are both linked down in the description but for right now head over to my740.com to schedule that call hit me up on facebook at expert credit sweeps or you can check out some awesome paid and free tutorials and even the deep dive work uh, the workshop at vault.my740.com or you can head over to hub.my740.com for the subscriber hub all right so that is it for today i hope you have a wonderful day and make sure to smack today's video we're talking about how to remove paid or settled charge-offs and you're going to discover the best option for your credit scores so by the end of this video you should know whether you should remove the account and if so the best way to do that and this is how we are doing this we're breaking it down into account analysis account determination and account plan of attack and we are of course starting with account analysis and it's really really simple leave it or delete it and then we do have some notes. So the accounts that you wanna leave are gonna make up a large percentage of your credit history, normally much older than your positive or recent accounts, older than 24 months, and or it doesn't show that you waited like six years to pay or settle that account. Now, the ones that you wanna delete normally make up a small percentage of your history, normally less than 24 months old, but doesn't mean that they have to be, or it shows that you waited like 100 years to pay or settle the account. Nobody wants to see that, okay? And then a couple of notes here, paying or settling may move you to a new credit scorecard and we have no way to know the effect. Now, for a mortgage, it may be better just to remove it, both for scoring as well as interest and approval. And if you have too many paid or settle charge-offs, it may not have the positive impact that you need for approval. So really sometimes it just comes down to like a case by case basis. But um, if the account did go to collections, you absolutely wanna remove the collection as well as the charge-off. Now we're going into step number two, determination. So we should now know whether account should be removed and we can move on to the next step and do our plan of attack. All right. Now, this is something that you can go check out at your own convenience and look at the different examples that I've put on here. But we've mapped it out between uh, paid or settled and then over on the right, unpaid. So if you're going to do paid or settled, you can start with something like inaccurate payment history and then go down to notice a dispute and then date last reported. Now, this does go down to regular factual disputes on both sides. But if you're going to do unpaid, now, uh, you might want to start with something like uh, one of the big guns, like activity after the close date. Now, it doesn't have to be the close date. Sometimes we don't have that date. It might just be when the account was charged off. And then you can go inaccurate late payment history between the CRAs down to date last active and then date last paid and then regular factual disputes. Because remember, we want to start with the big guns. We are going in with guns blazing. We are not going in with squirt guns blazing. So always remember that. That's why you want to use the biggest stuff in the beginning. We are not saving it for anything in the future, okay? Now you need to map out your plan of attack, your strategy, your initial reason, your subsequent reason, the key facts or violations, the notes, and then going down, it just says account number one, two, three, so on and so forth, okay? It makes it much easier when you can visually see what it is that you're doing. Now, 
know, charge offs do have a hierarchy chart and the stuff that you want to check out is going to be directly in the center and you can access that hundred percent for free. Just confirm your email and the link is in the description and it has multiple pages. And some of these are also from um, other videos such as how to remove charge offs without paying. So now you should be able to analyze, determine the best strategy, create your plan of attack based on the account type or on how you want to dispute that account. Now, these are two videos that I would check out next, how to remove closed accounts and how to remove charge offs without paying. But if this is something that you don't wanna do, that's totally fine, schedule your call with me and I will see if a credit sweep would be a good fit for you, all right? Just go down to my740.com or click on the link in the description. But otherwise, I hope you have a wonderful day if you are a dad. I hope you had a wonderful Father's Day and uh, like this video, smash the notifications if you you know haven't done